welcome to Well and Spinning. This is one of the teaching segment videos. It is July of 2016 and I'm so glad that you are joining me. I am sitting here on my Lundrum and I have, as you can see, a big plying bracelet on my wrist. Um, there are lots of videos on YouTube and whatnot. And maybe that'll be something that we'll do in the future in terms of learning. Um, I had a really great question by somebody about um, plying and I had to get this off of my wheel and off of my bobbin because I am preparing for Tour de Fleece. And so I thought that I would show you um, how I ply a worsted yarn. This is a lace weight that I spun um, almost a year ago and it's just been languishing on the bobbin. So it is very rested. There um, isn't a lot of twist in it anymore because it's been resting. Um, and I didn't spin this very high twist. So I thought that I would show you how I ply. This is my looped leader. I tend to use a um, five foot leader that I loop in half. No, um, an eight foot leader that I loop in half to create this loop at the end. And I just hook my singles through. And I do that with my fiber when I am starting to spin my singles. I spun my singles going in an, a Z direction or a clockwise direction. So I'm gonna be plying in an S direction or anti-clockwise. I've already set up the tension on my wheel. This is a Lendrum, so my, uh, and on the Lendrum, the uh, brake band and everything is at the back, and this is my brake band knob. And I have chosen a 15 to one for the whirl, which is here, um, and it's a polyurethane band, so there's no um, further adjustments that I need to do. And like I said, I've already um, adjusted my uptake. And so then I just start allowing some of that twist to go into the yarn and I do this for, oh, I'm already, I've already broken it. This is not my favorite way to ply with a plying bracelet, but I thought that I would show you what this looks like. I wonder if this is just gonna keep breaking if I don't unwind it a little bit. What I like to do with my plying is get going I like to get started, get into a bit of a rhythm, and then I start to tweak. So the first couple of yards of my yarn are not particularly, I'm not too worried about them. I generally use it to tie the skein. Um, I just wanna get myself into a bit of a rhythm and then I inspect my yarn and see if I like what I'm creating and then I tighten up or loosen the amount of twist that I'm putting in and I sort of let these first few yards of yarn just go and I, I don't worry about whether I like the results or not. So because my plying bracelet is so big and it's sort of bulky and it's not typical of what I normally work with, I would normally work with two bobbins. I'm gonna stop here. I've got a little bit of stuff on my bobbin here. You can see there's some curly cues. So there's a lot of twist going into this yarn like I said, I'm on 15 to one. So you can see by looking in the camera, that's really, really twisted and curly cued. And it's wanting to ply back on itself to balance itself. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you know how I feel about balanced yarns. And I will talk about that in the future and, and really get into that. Um, so I can see that this is just too much twist. And I really like some of this twist in here. It's got a nice look to it. So I'm actually going to go up to 12 to 1 for my ratio and I'm going to try to get into and I'm going to up my intake just a little bit and I'm going to try to get into a little bit of a faster rhythm so that that twist doesn't build up quite as quickly because the time that it takes me to unwind the yarn off of my wrist you can see there's a bit of a delay in terms of being able to put that yarn onto the wheel. And I've got another break here. So this is actually good for you guys to see. This is like plying in real life here. I need to find the end. And sometimes that can take a few minutes. Then I put the end in between my two singles and add a little bit of extra twist and then I just keep going. I 
This, I find this way of plying is very slow, but on the other hand, um, it gives me a really lots of opportunity to inspect the twist and see what's really going on in there and to see if I like it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what beginners, uh, what my students often do when we start talking about plying. I find with beginners, the act of plying and putting two um, singles together, they often stop treadling or they treadle too fast. So their yarns end up being unbelievably over twisted like what I was showing you at the beginning or they end up being under twisted because they're not treadling enough and adding enough twist so they end up kind of one treadle and then they add all of this to their bobbin and when, you, when they pull it off of their bobbin to look at and to inspect, they're surprised when it doesn't have a lot of twist in it. This is still very high twist because I'm putting in a lot of twist while I'm talking and I'm continuing to treadle while I undo my plying bracelet. Now that I'm getting into a bit of a rhythm, I'm having to slow my hands down in terms of letting the plied yarn onto the wheel. Because as you can see, it takes a while for the twist to build up in here. It doesn't just happen because you've treadled once or twice. And some people will actually count their treadles. So they'll, in this span of yarn, they'll figure out how much, how many times they want to treadle before they actually let the yarn onto the wheel. And that's a great way of plying really consistent yarns. Um, particularly when you're working with a lazy Kate. So, you know, you one, two, three, and then you would wind on. Um, and that will give you, and you do that for the whole length of the yarn that you're plying. One of the things that I always tell my students is to really pay attention to whether or not your yarn is balanced before you wind it on to your bobbin. If your yarn is balanced, and I'll talk about what that means in just a minute, when you wind it off onto your Nitty Naughty or skein winder and then put it in the bath for its wash, if your yarn is balanced, oh, I'm really tangled here, sorry guys. Um, if your yarn is balanced, after it's washed, some of that twist will dissolve in the water when you send it for a swim as well some of the twist will dissolve when you thwack it and bash it and snap it and I'll do another video um, on how to do all of that and what ends up happening is your balanced yarn that came off of your wheel or your spindle perfectly balanced is now under plied because there's not enough ply twist in it because you've taken even more of the twist out by washing it and thwacking it and bashing it so I always say to my students that be aware of how much ply twist you're putting in. You can get rid of twist by bashing and thwacking and soaking it in the water for a little bit longer than you maybe had originally planned to, but you can't, it's very, and, and so if, you're, if your yarns are a little bit over twisted, don't worry about it and if you pull it off of your nitty naughty or your skein winder and it twists on itself a few times you're probably going to have a balanced yarn after you finish with your washing and your thwacking and your bashing and all of that kind of stuff a lot of my plying i do by sight I know what I'm looking for, I know what I like in my finished yarns, and so I look for particular twist angles in my plied yarns as I'm going. Oh, it's happened again. It's almost like this one spot just gets stuck. So before I'm winding on, I'm actually looking at the twist angle, and on the camera, of course, it's hard for you to see, but I can see when the twist angle tightens up a little bit, and then I'm letting it on. And that's practice and experience. And I 
what I had a really wise teacher tell me once um, to look at your finished yarns after they're washed, after they're dried, a couple of weeks later after you haven't been staring at it every two seconds because you love it so much. Um, so, you know, once you've sort of moved on to your next project and you're not thinking about having just finished this beautiful yarn and you know, you're just totally and completely in love with it. A few weeks later, go back and look at that and some other of your hand spun yarns and look at the twist angle and the finished yarn and think about what you like about it and what you don't like about it. Because inevitably there's usually something about most projects that you would have done differently. And that will give you a really good indication of what you like about some of your plied yarns and what you don't like. Might be that your twist angle isn't sharp enough, it's not, it's not, um, um, your angle is sort of more um, gentle and you look at some of your other yarns and you realize that you like a twist angle that's much more, much sharper, maybe 45 degrees or even higher. Uh, maybe you look at some of your yarns and you see that it's got a 20 degree twist angle and it, the plies are almost sort of sitting next to each other and you really like that. So with worsted yarns as you're plying, one thing that you can do is if you have a bumpy spot that's not particularly even, you can just give it a good squeeze with your fingers, kind of like you do when you're drafting your singles to just take some of that air out and squish it all down.
So some, uh, there are a few thoughts that I had um, that I wanted to share with you. This, these singles were spun over the fold. So they are quite airy. You noticed that they fell apart quite a number of times and um, it's gonna create sort of a semi-woolen, semi-worsted yarn somewhere on that spectrum in between worsted and woolen. So this is not, these are not great singles to do a plying bracelet from, but like I said at the beginning, I was wanting to clear off my bobbin. This plying bracelet was quite big as well. And when you're learning how to do a plying bracelet, I would recommend a worsted spun rested for a couple of days before you wind it off um, and, and much smaller more probably like this size maximum and remember too that these were lace weight singles so this was a huge distance of singles and yarn i wanted to talk a little bit more about balanced yarn and biasing when you're knitting there's been lots of articles written about biasing and about blocking your knits and keeping that bias twist out from your yarns being overspun one way or the other. And I would really encourage you to play with that and to knit some swatches with your hand spun and see if your over twisted yarns really do bias that badly or not. I would also really encourage you to once you've finished your bobbin and you've spun your plied yarn, sorry, and you've plied your yarn and you start winding it off onto your nitty knotty and you just think that it's not twisted enough and there just isn't a high enough twist and that you think that maybe you under plied it, I would really recommend and, and, and encourage you to experiment with putting that bobbin back on your lazy kate and putting a clear bobbin on your wheel increasing your uptake so that it's just pulling in continuously and quite hard and tighten up that twist a little bit and see what you think um, lots of people put their singles through their wheels twice judith mckenzie McEwen is a big advocate of this because it tightens up your singles and it fixes any weak spots that maybe you're gonna break when you go to ply. And she's also a big advocate of putting your plied yarn through a second time. And I think there's some, some genius there in the sense that we often don't put enough ply twist into our yarns because we're so worried about having a balanced yarn. And balanced yarns are lovely and they're wonderful to work with, but um, sometimes having a little bit more twist creates a slightly more durable yarn and particularly in the case of merino merino tends to it's a fine wool and it has a short staple and it does tend to pill and putting a little bit more twist into it helps to guard against some of that fuzziness that you get from the finer wools and the pilling um, it makes your yarns a little bit more durable and it doesn't make them any less soft so do some experiments see what you think knit with your hand spun what I like to do is I put my skeins of hand spun onto my umbrella swift and I cut the ties but I don't take it I don't wind it off um, into a center pull ball with my ball winder instead I sit somewhere comfortably and I knit a swatch off of the skein while it's on the umbrella swift. And that way I can re-skein the yarn really easily and put the ties back on and keep the skein in skein form because often I'm not gonna knit with my yarns right away. But it gives me my knitted swatch and it gives me an opportunity to make some notes about the yarn while it's still fresh in my mind what I like about it what I don't like about it the wraps per inch the twist per inch the twist angle the grist 
yarn being on a skein winder is a great uh, skein winder or an umbrella swift is a great time to measure how much yardage you have. And if you know the weight of the yarn before you put it on your Swift, you can easily calculate your grist. And for those of you who aren't sure what grist is, I wrote an extensive blog post about grist. All you have to do is go to wellfordpearls.com and in the search box on the upper right hand corner, type in grist, G-R-I-S-T. So I'm almost finished this plying ball finally. It's taken me a long time. The key I think with plying is at the beginning when you first start, and you got your first bobbin, especially if you're doing a, if you're plying up a sweater spin and you've got, you know, 10, 15, 20 bobbins and storage bobbins to ply. You're all keen and you take your time and you watch a twist angle and you keep your fit, feet in rhythm and you move your hands slowly because you're keen and you want it to be really perfect. And the further into the plying you get, the lazier you get. You don't want to sit there anymore. It's tedious to make sure that your twist angle now is the same as it was when you first started plying. Your hands get tired, your feet get tired. Plying is a really awesome exercise in staying with your project and staying present. And if you feel yourself just starting to drift and losing the thread of what you're doing, I really encourage you to just get up and walk away. Work on something else, go have a pot of tea, have a snack, go for a walk and come back when you're fresh because you'll be really disappointed in the yarns that you plied at the end of your plying project versus the ones that you started with. And you'll end up having to put them back through your wheel to add twist or take twist away. So be really mindful of um, keeping yourself accountable in terms of the quality of your plying. That would be my like number one takeaway if you feel yourself drifting while you're plying, get up and go for a walk. Do something else and then come back to it when you're fresh again and, and excited again because you won't be happy with your yarns. And sometimes it'll take me a couple of weeks to ply up a sweater spin. And I keep a, when it's a really big plying project, I actually keep the skein hanging on my wheel. My Lendrum's a great, um, has a spot right there that I can hang my skeins from gives me a chance to just keep checking in and it's usually an unwashed skein so that I can compare because the wash skein is going to be a little bit different and that's the end and I let that on and then what I'll do later today is I will wind this off onto a nitty knotty and put it in a bath and send it for a swim. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something. Keep in touch in the Ravelry group and if you are on the Slack channel, I will see you over there. Bye guys.